Hi, my name is Dr. Kiran. Today we'll be discussing the basics of reading and interpreting chest x-rays. This is a very important skill required in the making of a good clinician. So before we read an x-ray, the first thing that we have to make sure is that the chest x-ray that we are reading actually belongs to the patient that we are seeing. So patient identification is very important. It will usually, the patient detail will usually be given on the x-ray. Uh, here you can see on the top left corner of the x-ray would be given the patient details. It will usually contain the name, the age, the sex of the patient and the hospital number. So this always has to, uh, this has to be looked so that uh, there is no mix up between the x-ray and the patient. And the other thing is you can see here, this actually denotes the side of the x-ray. So a good way is to imagine that the patient is facing towards you. So the patient's right side is actually your left side. This helps us to rule out any dextrocardia, any situs inverses. Next, we will just go through a normal x-ray and what all structures we have to look before we interpret. So here you can see this is the trachea, the trachea coming down till the carina and bifurcating to the right and the left bronchus. Here you can see the spinous processes. This is the clavicle and uh, this is the right lung field and this is the left lung field. You can see the ribs, the anterior ribs like this and these are the posterior ribs and then you can see the uh, the hilum here the right atrium the left ventricle your right hemidiaphragm and your left hemidiaphragm your costophrenic angles and your cardiophrenic angles so these are the basic structures that you have to look at uh, while we interpret chest x-rays so coming to the assessment of quality of the image so the first thing that we have to look is at the projection of the image, whether it is an AP or a PA. The AP stands for anteroposterior and PA stands for posteroanterior. So uh, you can see two images here. This is the AP projection and this is the PA projection. In this diagram, you can see that the X-ray projection comes from the back. So this is the patient he is standing. And this is the front of the patient, this is the back of the patient. So this is the actual picture of it. And you can see that the X-ray projections come from the back and it falls on a film, which uh, on a film cassette which uh, lies on the front of the patient. And on the other hand, the projection, the, the, here the patient is facing the front and this is the back. And you can see that the projections are coming from the front and it hits the plate which is located posteriorly. So see, this is the AP view, that is the X-ray anterior posterior. This is the PA view, where the projections come from posteriorly and caught on the film cassette, which is uh, held uh, in the front. Usually what we take is PA X-rays, but when patients are frail, bedridden, patients who cannot stand up, and usually patients in the ICU, we take AP views. So when there is a when there is a doubt whether it is an AP or a PA view, what we usually look is the medial edges of the scapula. See in this patient, usually when we take a PA X-ray, the hand of the patient is held at the hip. So thus you can see that the scapula is rotated laterally and no longer over the lung field. So that is one way in which we see it is an AP or a PA view. Now look at these two images and uh, uh, these two x-rays are of the same person. One is an AP view and one is a PA view. So if you look at the first picture, you can see the medial edges of the scapula. So this is an AP view. While this one, the, the scapula is not being seen, it is out of the lung field. So this is a PA view. So that is how you differentiate between an AP and a PA view. See the edge of the scapula is outside. Another uh, important fact is that the cardiothoracic ratio is around 50 percentage in an AP while it is less than 50 percentage in a PA. So uh, this is how we differentiate a PA and an AP view. Scapula usually in PA view is seen in the periphery while in AP it, uh, it, uh, it comes over the lung fields. Clavicles project over the lung fields while in AP it is above the apex of the lung field. 
ribs the posterior ribs can be seen distinct while in ap the anterior ribs can be seen distinct so that is the major difference between a pa and a ap view in exercise now the next important factor where we have to look at is the rotation of the film we have to see whether the the film is rotated or not so for this we actually have to look at the spy side the spinous processes and we have to look how much of distance it is from the medial end of the clavicles the for a patient to be correct the it has to be equidistant from both the medial heads of the clavicle the interpretation becomes very difficult in case of rotation so this is how it can see you can see that when the patient is well aligned an accurate assessment can be done but see in this patient the patient is actually rotated to the left so here what happens the heart size is exaggerated while if the patient is rotated to the right the true size cannot be mentioned so if the patient is rotated there are lots of things that it cannot be commented on properly so look at this x-ray here what we can see is the deviation of trachea it cannot be commented upon the cardiac size it cannot be commented upon there will be when there is rotation there will be crowding of ribs false densities on lung fields it may be mistaken for consolidation so hence rotation is important when we uh, rotation is very important when we read an x-ray the next factor is to see whether it has been taken in a good inspiration or an expiration here also these two x-rays are of the same patient but one taken uh, in a good inspiratory effort and another one in an expiratory effort so it when we take x-rays we have to take it in full inspiratory effort so how do we know whether it is it is basically we should be able to see the diaphragm being intersected by at least five to six anterior ribs or eight to ten posterior ribs in the mid clavicular line so here you can see this is a very good inspiratory film you can see one two three four five six anterior ribs uh, in the mid clavicular line while here you can only see three anterior ribs so that is why um, an inspiratory good inspiratory film is required for proper interpretation and next comes exposure so with proper exposure how do you know whether it is properly exposed is actually you should be able to see the spine faintly visible behind the heart shadows here you can see an underexposed x-ray and here you can see an overexposed x-ray so for ideal interpretation it has to be adequate ex adequately exposed so uh, there has to be a systematic approach while we interpret an x-ray we have to go either inwards to outwards or outwards to inwards a simple mnemonic that can be used is a b c d e where a stands for airways b for breathing that is the lung field or bones c for the cardiac size d from diaphragm e for equipments and everything else so another important factor is also always clinically correlate when you read an x-ray always see what the patient has clinically have a provisional diagnosis and see whether when you read an x-ray it is fitting so we'll go to a a is actually a stands for airways so we have to look at the position of the trachea the carina the bronchus look for any tracheal deviation it is normally located centrally or in a minimal deviation to the right side and here in this x-ray you can see that the trachea is being pushed towards the right side and you can see here there is a massive left-sided pleural effusion that is collection of fluid in the pleural cavity and on the left side which is pushing the trachea on towards the other side so here it is a left sided massive pleural effusion causing a push of the trachea towards the opposite side next uh, when you look at this x-ray you can note that the trachea there is, has been a mild push towards the left side you can also notice that there is a difference in the lung field when you compare both the right and the left the right lung field seems to be more black and look at this there is actually no vascular markings when you compare this side to this side so this is actually air being collected and trapped inside the pleura on the right side so this is called a pneumothorax and here what has happened is the pneumothorax is pushing the trachea towards the opposite side and on the next x-ray here you can see that here 
this side you can see there is no pneumothorax or any pleural effusion but here you can see that uh, the, the trachea is being actually pulled towards this side. So this is actually a collapse of the right lung field causing a pull of the trachea towards that side. Next coming to B that is the breathing or the lung fields and also the bones. In this lung field, you can see white shadows or opacities. Here you can see white shadows or opacity. And when you see such things, there has to be a lung pathology. Here in the right middle and lower zone, along with your left lower zone, you can see consolidation. That is whitish patches you can see here. And these consolidation, one more probable cause can be pneumonias. So in pneumonia, there is replacement of the alveolar air with fluid or pus. Always correlate clinically when you, when, you, when you have x-rays like this. Always see whether it is fitting in with your clinical examination of the patient. And uh, another thing to look for pleural effusion. One major thing is you have to look at the costophrenic angle. So this is your costophrenic angles on both sides. And if there is any blunting of the costophrenic angle, that will denote actual pleural effusion. So in this x-ray you can see the left sided a pleural effusion. You can see it is up till here and here also there is a right sided pleural effusion. Here the right sided costophrenic angle is blunted when you compare it to both sides. So here you can see uh, pleural effusion. Now according to the location of the inflammatory foci, pneumonias can be divided into two main subcategories as lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia. When the infection is confined to only one or a few lobe of lung, that is known as lobar pneumonia. See here you can see that the whole lobe is involved. And in this picture you can see this whole lobe is involved. On the other hand, bronchopneumonia is the inflammation of lung parenchyma that arises from the bronchi, bronchial secondary to an infection. So here you can see it is all bronchopneumonia. And coming to these x-rays, when you look at these x-rays, you can notice something here in this x-ray here. So these are all well-defined discrete areas. So these are actually described as solitary masses. So these solitary masses can be of any pathology, can be of malignancies. To know what it is, this actually requires biopsy to know what the pathology is. Next, you can see in this x-ray, you can see multiple rounded white discrete lesions on both the lung fields. This is an x-ray actually showing multiple lung metastases, also called as cannonball lesions. Next, coming to this x-ray, here, look at this. You can see a thin white rim, which is encircling and which is producing something like a cavity. In this x-ray also, you can see a cavitator. So, these are cavitatory lesions. And the most common condition causing cavitatory lesion is tuberculosis. So, that is an important finding. And it is pathognomonic of active pulmonary tuberculosis. Next, in this patient, uh, this patient is actually in the ICU on mechanical ventilation with, with 100 percentage of oxygen. Uh, from the ventilator. When you when you evaluate him, you can see his previous x-rays were not bad. His cardiac status is also normal. So in this setting, you can see that there are bilateral, you can see diffuse chest infiltrates and it is of acute onset. His PaO2 by FiO2 is actually on the lower side. All these are in favor of acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS. So this x-ray is an example of a patient with ARDS. And in this patient, in this x-ray, you can see ill-defined opacities or shadows in bilateral perihilar regions extending laterally, suggestive of pulmonary edema. This is actually seen in left-sided heart failures. Another uh, important sign is uh, which is clinically, which is described as your bat wing appearance. So as you can see, the perihilar region on both the sides, it is somewhat described like the wing of a bat. So a bat wing appearance is seen in 
pulmonary edema. So, this is very important uh, finding. So, always look for a bat wing appearance. Next, uh, if you look at this x-ray, this is what we call a miliary pattern. So, it consists with presence of multiple, you can see on both the lungs, extensive, multiple, small, usually 1 to 3 millimeters in diameter nodules in the lung with sharp margin. This is also very characteristic of miliary TB. So, if you see an x-ray like this, the chances of miliary TB should be uh, very high. And next uh, is an x-ray of bronchiectasis actually. Tram track opacities usually are seen in cylindrical bronchiectasis. Air fluid levels may be seen in cystic bronchiectasis. But these are usually uh, only uh, well appreciated in CT thoraxes. The overall appearance appears to be an increase in bronchovascular markings and bronchi seen end on may appear as ring shadows. The pulmonary vasculature also appears ill-defined. So, the, the, if you get an x-ray like this, the probability of bronchiectasis is very high. Next, uh, look at this x-ray. So, the major thing that strikes out here is, one is there is much darkening of the right lung field when you compare it with the left side. There is absence of any vascular markings. So, then like the earlier x-ray, this is actually a pneumothorax. But another thing you can clearly see is a, is a clear line which is demarcating air and fluid. So, you have an air fluid level and a pneumothorax. So, this is actually a chest x-ray showing a right-sided hydro-pneumothorax. Now, coming to the, the second part of B, which is also bones. So, here you have to look at the bony cage. So, when you have look, you have to look whether there are extra cervical ribs. You have to see whether there are any fractures. If you see here, you can see a left sided clavicular fracture. You can see multiple rib fractures. So, uh, the bony cage also has to be assessed when we read the chest x-rays. Next is C. C, we have to look at the cardiac size. And as you, as we had discussed earlier, we cannot comment on uh, an AP X-ray rotated view. So, all those we cannot be commented accurately. So, a properly taken PA has to be seen to assess the cardiac size. Here you can see this uh, is actually representing, this line is representing your right atrium while on the left side is your left ventricle. So, the assessment of heart size is actually by calculating the cardiothoracic ratio. That is the cardiac width divided by your thoracic width. So, here so this is your cardiac width. The maximum width is your cardiac divided by your thoracic width. That is also we have to take the maximum. And this actually should be should be less than 50 percent. So, here you can actually see it is more than 50 percent. So, this x-ray is actually uh, showing a cardiomegaly. Next is the diaphragm. So, diaphragm you have to look to see the continuity of the diaphragm. And usually, the right hemidiaphragm is a little bit uh, elevated compared to the left side. And in this x-ray, this you can note air under diaphragm. So, this is actually a very important sign and this actually denotes air under diaphragm may be a pneumoperitoneum which is a medical emergency. Next, coming to E. E actually stands for equipments and everything else. So, you have to look at all the lines, all the other equipments in a patient. So, in this x-ray, you can see a right-sided subclavian catheter, central venous catheter, a left internal jugular venous catheter. You can see the, the, the end of a nasogastric tube. Here you can see sternotomy wires usually seen after CABGs. In this x-ray you can see a pacemaker, the pacemaker wires. So, these all have to be mentioned when we interpret an x-ray. So, these are the basic things that you have to look at while you read and try to interpret the uh, x-rays. So, uh, patient identification is important. Uh, always correlate clinically. So, you examine the patient first. You have your differentials. Then you see the x-ray and see whether they are actually fitting in. Mnemonics that uh, which make it easy are A, B, C, D, E. 
where A is for airway, B is for breathing, that is you look at the lung field and also for bony abnormalities and bony cage. Then C for the cardiac size, D for the diaphragm and E for equipment and everything else. Thank you.